Sustainability. What is it? Well, we know it's complicated. Lots of people are talking about it. But today, I'm going to try and explain exactly what it is, why we need it, and how we go about getting it. First, there are three things that you need to know about me. One, I love business. Two, I love the environment. Three, I hate being told what to do. I mean, seriously, I hate it. So, business person, environmentalist, curmudgeon. That's me. You got it? You see, I've spent years of my professional life touring the world as a professional illusionist. And because of this, I have a really good understanding of perception and, more important, misperception. Please take a look at this uh, image. Do you see flowers or wheels? Do any of these flowers appear to move? Well, you see, this is a misperception. It is an illusion. The image is completely static, but the shapes and shadows make the flowers appear to move just ever so slightly, maybe even spinning. Because we see them moving, our mind interprets that to be that they really are moving. We believe they are moving, but they're not. This is an illusion. This is a really good example of a solo illusion. There are also global illusions, too. In the year 1075, people of the planet Earth, almost everyone in fact, believed that the Earth was flat, pancake flat. So flat you could drive your car right off the edge and it would fall right off. This is an illusion. In the year 1475, people of the planet Earth, almost everyone, believed we were the center of the cosmos. This is an illusion. In the year 1975, people of the planet Earth believed that these pants looked good on a dude. This is an illusion. Some people today believe that you can do almost anything to the planet and it will not come back to harm us. This is an illusion. Please don't misunderstand me. The Earth is not fragile. It is dynamic, elastic, and really, really huge. But it can and is being harmed by human activity. You see... Nature works in cycles. The air, the land, and water, all cycles. The same air that you breathe out gets recycled in this system, and you breathe it back in again sometime in your future. The same molecules of water that make up your body are the same water molecules that might have been part of the Pacific Ocean or a a giant sequoia tree or, at some time in their past, another human being. Nature works in cycles. But we've built our economy in a straight line. We depend on energy that takes millions of years to make, can only be used one time, and pollutes every time it's used. And we misuse, abuse, and overuse natural resources. We're trying to work outside of the rules that nature has set up. Great question. It matters now for two reasons. Math and hole digging. By the year 1375, there were 370 million people on the planet Earth, living, loving, beating the heck out of each other. By the year 1975, there were 4 billion people, billion with a B, people on planet Earth, living, loving, still beating the heck out of each other. By the year 2012, there were 7 billion people on the planet. Today, 7 billion people still doing the same thing. By the year 2050, we expect there will be 10 billion people on the planet. 10 billion people on the planet Earth. In and of itself, 10 billion people hanging out on planet Earth is not really a problem. But this brings us to hole digging. A long time ago, you and I had a distant relative named Ugg. If Ugg wanted to dig a hole, he probably dug it by hand. If Ugg was smart, he'd use a rock. If he was head of the class smart, he would attach a stick to the rock and dig him some serious hole. One day, Ugg invented a shovel. The next day, he invented a front-end loader. He could dig a hole really fast and really deep. Ugg's ability to dig a hole really fast and really deep doesn't matter that much until it's multiplied by the number of Uggs on the planet. This matrix is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, uh uh-oh is right. Math 
times hole digging is a huge problem. But there is a solution. We call that solution sustainability. Glad you asked. Sustainability means that we meet the needs of today without compromising the ability of future generations to meet theirs. Uh, yeah, it is possible. Even better, because sustainably oriented businesses and sustainably oriented consumers are what will create real long-term sustainability. We've built our global economy in a linear fashion. The world works cyclically. How do we align these? Well, there are two principles of sustainability. One, it must be renewable. Two, it can't create pollution. And if all nine billion of us want to be rich, get rich, or get richer, we're going to have to do it sustainably. Modern consumers want all products and services to be affordable, quality made, available, non-polluting, people planet profit friendly and to come from companies that are transparent about all these things. The best thing about sustainability is that it can offer all of them. More importantly, it's an excellent strategy framework for the last three specifically, non-polluting, people planet profit centric and transparency. It turns out that the idea we must choose between economy or the environment is a false dichotomy. It's another illusion. Both national and international studies have shown that sustainably oriented companies do better financially than non-sustainably oriented companies. Specifically, a study by the National Bureau of Economic Research found that sustainably oriented companies had a 4.8% better stock performance. They had lower volatility, higher return on assets, and higher return on equity. It turns out that when companies and consumers focus on sustainability, they can actually use technology to reduce impact on the planet, yet drive economic growth at the same time. The single largest expense for a data center are the chillers that are needed to keep everything inside cool. Yahoo designed theirs in the shape of a chicken coop. The hot air rises out naturally. And they added louvers in the sides of the building to allow the cool air outside to flow through. This design requires much less energy than conventional data centers. Herman Miller. They designed their mirror chair to be 95% recyclable. It contains recycled materials. You can even download the instructions to disassemble the chairs after its useful life. Deconstruction takes about 15 minutes, and 100% of the energy used to make the chair comes from a renewable source. Cintiba does kind of the same thing. They will take back the flooring that they've manufactured at the end of its life, and they will recycle it into new flooring. TerraCycle makes bags out of trash. Literally, things that can't be recycled easily, they make backpacks and bags, lunch boxes. It's very interesting. Luscious Garage specializes in servicing and repairing electric or hybrid cars. They use renewable energy to power almost the entire garage. Lush Shampoo eliminated the bottle and packaging from their shampoos, yet the shampoo lasts longer and does a better job than more conventional shampoos. Tenant Tenant eliminated the use of toxic chemicals completely for their industrial push-behind scrubbers by choosing to clean with tap water and electricity. These scrubbers use less energy, less water, and dump zero chemicals down the drain. Green opportunities are everywhere once we start looking for them. Have you ever owned a red car? I have. The day after I bought mine, I saw red cars everywhere. You see, there weren't actually any more red cars on the road. But my mind, because I'd bought one and my mind thought it was important, had been alerted to the idea that red cars were important to me and it started looking for them. Psychologists and illusionists know that what we're predisposed to see, we see. Sustainable is attainable, but we need to align our economy with ecology. Will that be easy? No. Do we have to do it? Yes. So, you can choose to be this guy, or you can be this guy, 
Or you can even try to appeal to this guy. Or you can follow the lead and support these guys. Now don't get me wrong, I love humanity. We invented a device that allows us to talk to someone on the other side of the planet. We even invented a device that allows us to actually leave the planet. For crying out loud, we invented ice cream with sprinkles. We are awesome. But our principal source of energy takes millions of years to make, creates pollution, and can only be used once. We abuse and misuse our planet's natural resources in an unsustainable manner. We are on an unsustainable path, and we must choose a new one. Sustainable is attainable. And to get there, we don't need to become this guy. Or this guy. We are already who we need to be to make it happen. It's like William McDonough says. The Stone Age didn't come to an end because they ran out of stones. It came to an end because humans found a better way to use natural resources. They found a better way to perpetuate the species. We have found that better way, and it's called sustainability.